Hi, good evening and welcome to the Monday, November 17th school committee meeting. Um, the meeting is being recorded for LCTV. It will not be live as we have chosen to move our meeting on the same night as the select board. So they are being presented live. We will be presented later. So let us start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Longmeadow School Committee maintains educational policies that foster continuous improvement by challenging and supporting all children in a safe and caring learning environment, enabling them to reach their highest potential and to become productive citizens. Through effective communication and positive relationships, the Longmeadow School Committee will make informed decisions in the best interest of the students, the schools, and the Longmeadow community. And tonight we have Blueberry Hill School here with us um, for their presentation. And I will let Marie Pratt take over, their principal. Good evening. Certainly, uh, I'm very proud to be here with members of the Blueberry Hill Press Corps. Uh, three years ago, Mrs. Johansson, who's one of our fourth grade teachers, and uh, Wendy Upson, who was a parent volunteer in Mrs. Johansson's class, came up with the idea of having a school newspaper. Um, and it's been very successful. Um, we, this is our third year, and they're gonna, I'm not going to say too much, but I do want to acknowledge not only those two, but we have other parent volunteers who, who come in and help with the editing process, and our PTO who help us um, pay for the printing costs of the school newspaper. So I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Johansson and our student reporters. Thank you. You might need to come over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start with that I embarrassed my principal and my superintendent at a meeting recently. We were uh, at a round table talking about some school business and we were all asked to introduce ourselves, give our name, where we worked and what we did. I announced that I'm Anna Marie Johansson, I teach at Blueberry Hill School and I dance and write poetry. <laughs> but I forgot the most important thing. I forgot to tell everybody that I encourage young people to use their words and love words. So when Mrs. Upson came to me with the idea of having a school newspaper, I jumped at it. I caught it with both hands and my feet and I said, let's go. Marie had to calm us down because we had too many ideas um, at the start. To know that our students were going to have an authentic audience. Now they've been writing for their teachers, for their classmates, for their parents, but now their words were going to have an impact outside of the classroom. And that's what makes this project that we're doing at Blueberry Hill School so real. Because they have learned that what they do with words makes a difference. But I can go on and on and on, as many of you know, and I won't do that unless you invite me back, and then I will <laughs> gladly do that. But uh, the children are here for a very specific purpose. I'm going to ask them to come to the table and introduce themselves. So, why don't you join me at the table yep. here? They're not as easy with the microphone and public speaking as um, other people, so they may be a little nervous. When you're talking, why don't you take the microphone and pull it right over to you? Ooh, why don't you begin? <laughs> I'm Lou Pasturzik. I'm in fifth, and this is my second year doing the newspaper. Last year I did Engage New York, and this year I'm doing the front pages. My name is Lillian Jackson, and I am in fifth grade. This is my second year doing the newspaper. And for um, this year's articles, I am doing word studies of Ubuntu and um, community, and my third article is about the importance of word study in public ed education. I am Caroline Upson. I'm 11, I'm in fifth grade, and this is my second year doing the newspaper. This year, I'm going to do the, this, the holiday gifts, and last year I did um, holiday gifts and 
Alexia Corfi. Uh, my name is Tina Lee. I'm in fifth grade. This is my second year in the newspaper. I do interviews and I have done articles on Mrs. Kodra, the assistant principal, and the music teacher, Mrs. Schranker. I am Isabella Jung and I am in fifth grade. This is my second year doing the newspaper and I, I wrote an article. Uh, I did interviews last year. I interviewed a, a figure skater and her name is Captain Lee. And this year I am doing, writing a column on my, the eyes of a locker. Hi, I'm Jack Wright, and uh, I am a, I'm 10 years old, and I am a fourth grader at Blueberry Hill School. I'm a photographer for the, and a writer f for the Blueberry Hill newspaper. I'm Sarah Back. This is, I'm in fourth grade. This is my first year on the newspaper. I interviewed Eric, L I interviewed Eric Lesser and wrote an article about, about him. And he, here are some examples of the newspaper. The issue we're giving out are unfortunately not for you to keep. <laughs> when we oh. distribute the paper, we make sure they're, uh, they go everywhere. They go down to the library, they go to Starbucks, they, they go to visitors in our school office. Um, so you may look at these and then return them for our archive. Questions? <coughs> um, well, we have a, a purpose here. Ooh. I don't want to. I don't want to go over your time. No, no. Is that all right? You are fine. So, please, children, do you feel comfortable with questions? Sure. Question. Yeah. Let me explain your purpose, and then you will explain our purpose. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the purpose. Oh. Will you uh, begin with your purpose? Are we listening? Our newspaper, Blueberry Waves Hello, uses the writing and photography skills of fourth and fifth graders. We would like to ask you a question, actually one question, and if you don't mind, we'd like to record our conversation. In this way, we can make sure we get all the right words. Our issues often have themes. For instance, last spring the theme was all about learning, which included the possibility of cyber school, MCAS preparation, and stores library programs. Last November, it was all about giving back. For example, Long Meadow High School Key Club and a new, a new student writing why he's thankful for Blueberry Hill School. This next issue will hit the stands early in December, focuses on community. The question is, what does the school committee do that contributes to the community of Longmeadow? Oh, they interview. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are being interviewed. And they're all ready to take notes. Well, you want me to answer you this? You may start. We'll all take turns. Okay. Well, I think that the thing that we do that contributes most to the town of Longmeadow mm -hmm. is uh, we provide the opportunity and we fight really fight to make sure that all of you and every other student across the district has the opportunity to have an incredible ed education that allows them to do fun and creative things like write a newspaper and write a really good newspaper at that. Uh, I think that's the thing we do best. I think when people think about Longmeadow and they think about uh, you know the, the reason people move to Longmeadow, more often than not it's for the schools and it's because there's people who sit up here every other week on Monday nights and uh, and fight so that you guys have everything you need to, to make sure you do well, not only here, but when you leave here and go off to college and then work. And this is being recorded too, so if, if I talk too fast. <laughs> we have my iPad. Oh, good. Liz, did you want to add? Um, I would piggyback upon Michael's comments. Um, and um, I would say that um, when I grew up in actually in town as well and I went to Blueberry Hill and um, after graduating going to college I I love my experience in Longmeadow and through the school so much that I've wanted to come back and contribute so I think that's an opportunity for all of you 
when you get older. Um, I would say that I think that really our biggest job is to be advocates um, for you guys to make sure that you get everything you need and then some, and to make sure that your teachers have what they need to give back to you, to give you guys every opportunity. Um, and also to kind of push our administrators and our teachers to think outside the box and bring you guys new and interesting ideas. Kim? Um, I was just going to say something similar to <laughs> what Katie was just saying about I think um, being part of the school committee is um, being part of a group of, like a team of people that are um, pushing the administration and um, helping provide the kids every age, K through 12, um, the best education that they can get while they're here. Michelle? I'll agree with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how much more you can yeah. say. I mean, that's pretty much what we're here for. It's right. just a Staff, do you think you have enough to write a good article to answer that question? Do you want to confer? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That's right. You think you have enough? No. No, would you want to ask another question? Well, maybe we should do more than just like three quotes. Maybe get like a whole everyone's perspective on it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. How about we just ask for one more contributor? Okay. Okay. And then they, I think they want to ask you some questions. Well, hmm. and. And while I'd love to contribute, but I can you take two more contributions? Because I think that an important one would be Joseph, who is a student representative from the high school who sits on our committee. And I, I'm sure he has a different perspective than we do as parents and adults. So your question was, what do we do to contribute to the community? Mm -hmm. So they touched on what the committee does as a whole to contribute to our community. And I think they're, they're really uh, the most important thing that they talked about is making sure that students like us, and I put us in the same group because we are both students, uh, get the best opportunities. But the other thing that you have to think about is look at the people that are sitting up here. We have people who run campaigns. You have people who run our district. And you have people who are parents. You have people who are involved in every aspect of the community, people who are running events. Uh, we have every aspect of the community that you, what makes La Meadow great, the schools and the events and everything that we put on, stuff like LEAF and, um, and our plays and our civil campaigns, all that kind of stuff. You have representatives who run all of that right up here, so. And I think finally, I mean, I, my committee, you know, as chair, my committee did a great job of, of summarizing what we do and, and what we do to give back. And I think it's important to realize that you know, they noted that we're here every other Monday night and, and we're here, you know, on TV or, or talking to you guys, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. We're not just here on, you know, twice a week or twice a month on, on Monday nights. We all work besides being moms and besides having jobs out in the real world. We also um, spend a lot of time in, in meetings and making sure that you guys get cool stuff to do and and we try to support your teachers and your principals so that you have access to as much as you can. I want to um, make sure we have correct spelling of names. <laughs> we don't, I know you have um, a larger agenda and you did say you had some questions for us. Do you still have those? Sure, I'll make one comment. I think also it's important is that school committee members are volunteers and people sometimes really underestimate how much time they put in. Um, several times I've suggested to school committee maybe we give them a stipend to pay for the babysitters or gas or time and they keep saying no, we want every dollar that the school system has to go back to classrooms. Mm -hmm. That's what's mm -hmm. most important to them and I think that's something Absolutely. that the whole community should know that not only do they volunteer but they refuse to take anything so that you get everything that you need in the classrooms. And we appreciate that about our school committee. We do get the tickets to the concerts. We do. And football games. <laughs> so I guess why do you serve on the newspaper? because that's volunteer work for you as well and it must be a lot of work. <laughs> you want, yeah. The tables are turned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I serve on the newspaper because I love to write, and I want to share writing. I want to share word study, and I want people to become, um, I want it to become known that writing, it's hard, but at the end of the day, it's worth it because you've created this beautiful thing. It's even, it's, it's amazing. And um, one, one of the things in Mrs. Johansson's class was uh, we did word study, and that really sparked why I wanted to go to the newspaper because words became important to me. And um, we need to, and that's why I did an article on why we need to study word study because without words, we wouldn't have this newspaper. We wouldn't have writing. We would just have, um, we wouldn't even have an alphabet. We would just have a list of sounds that would be our communication. So writing and um, words, they really are the essence of communication. Joseph, can you put her in touch with the uh, jet jotter? I think she's ready to <laughs> yeah, she's going out to the high school newspaper. We'd love to. Oh, and if you need any spelling um, on our website, the Model Public Schools website, all our names are up there. Okay, thank you. Make note of that, please. So, and I think Superintendent Doyle is right. You know, you guys are volunteering your time. You're you're giving back to your community and what you're doing, and getting the news out to to your classmates, to your school building, to to your community. So that's an important job that you guys do as well. I have a question. Oh, so I can see that you guys clearly love language and you see the beauty of words. Um, but what do you find most challenging about being on the newspaper? I find it challenging to ask the right questions. Like, some things are just junk. Some things are actually important. It's hard to get things that other people will care about, that not just you or some of your friends will care about, getting the other people to actually read it and get interested in it. I also find it challenging because um, what if you have a boring story and you, you may want an exciting story? It's, very, it's pretty hard to find an exciting story. Also, what if you don't have enough details? And I think you need enough details. So, plus, yeah. I find it hard to not try not to add your own opinion into it. <laughs> It's like you want to say something so badly that you think of it, but newspaper is all about news, and you can't just put your own opinion, stick like your own opinion into it. You guys are incredibly impressive. Absolutely. Are very thoughtful. The, f the most hardest thing for me, um, contrary to his, is too much detail, because at the end of the day, you're writing about facts, you're writing about... You're writing about this is what, this is true, and you can't put things that are in too much detail, because if you put too much detail, the details, they might come out um, false. Or, um, and then you're writing for kids, which is another thing, because you, ha you can't put, um, you can't, you have to write it in a sense that, that um, all kids of all ages can understand. So you guys are already taking these in there. Both sides of the story. For me, what's hard is getting the article on time. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Um, because sometimes if you do it by email, you might not get the email on time, or you might forget the email. Or I had an issue today trying to email Mrs. Johansson's son about one of the articles. <laughs> <laughs> I and they tell all your secrets, Mrs. Johansson. And it, no, don't <laughs> no, it's an email interview. My son works for Apple, and we just took a spin on the holiday <laughs> giving. Absolutely. Uh, so absolutely. So I couldn't get onto my account because I couldn't get the password. So I don't know how I'm going to 
find out my password? <laughs> so, I think I can take care of that. <laughs> you can help. There's an app for that. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think if you had. Absolutely. I think, that I think, and Katie touched on this a lot, like the challenges that you have that you just expressed are the literally the exact same challenges that like newspaper reporters have for the Springfield Republican or even the Longmeadow News because I can't tell you the number of times that I've had like Hope Trembley at the Longmeadow News call and say, I have a deadline today, I need that like now. And that's exactly what you what you're facing is, you know, you've got your own deadline. So I think it's uh it's good good work experience already. And they've also we've also had guest speakers um, from the Liz Roman and somebody Alison I can't Ward. Alison, Alison Ward. Ward. A lot of she's people our, come in. Our, even our Jet Jotter staff has come in and, and talk to us about the importance of various elements of producing a newspaper. Fantastic. Well, and, and I'm glad you that you tape your your conversations off and you started with that. Uh, if you ask superintendents, they number one complaints about being interviewed, how often we're misquoted. And recently it happened to one of our newspapers. We're working on the elementary math program, and the reporter said it was the middle school math program. So the middle school math teachers were all upset because they just redid their curriculum. And here it is in the newspaper that everyone believes that we're redoing the curriculum. So getting the information right is pretty important. And one little detail can throw the whole story. So I'm right. glad that you're taking good notes and sometimes and tape. What, and you know what they've learned to do? What did you learn? to do about facts. Protect the source. <laughs> what <laughs> <Uncle. Let them laughs> Check the source. Check the facts. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All of you. you and I love job. getting your newspaper. It's superb. No, we don't want to be responsible I for... Absolutely. Absolutely, they're fantastic. It's always a pleasure receiving the newspaper. Right? <laughs> Love it. Microfiche. Microfiche. Scan them. Okay. So moving along, um, correspondence. We have quite a bit of correspondence today. Um, a memo from Mr. Donald Jarvis of the Lower Pioneer Valley Career and Technical Education Center dated November 5th, 2014, regarding Student of the Month awards for October 2014. Longmeadow students recognized are Laura Granger for cosmetology and Rayanne Kukla for information support and networking. Um, we also received an email letter from Mr. Bill <laughs> Mickey, if I'm saying his name properly, uh, dated November 5th, 2014, regarding um, 50 best high schools in Massachusetts list according to Mish.com. Um, and an email dated October 29th from Mrs. Leah Bankel. Um, regarding visitor comments during school committee meeting on October 27th, 2014. And finally, an email dated October 30th, 2014 from Ms. Lee Vanko regarding school committee comments to visitor comments of school committee meeting on October 27th, 2014. Okay. And do we have any visitor comment, public comments at this time? No? All right. School committee comments. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I figured you did. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a quick, uh, I want to give a quick reminder of the town meeting tomorrow night, uh, and there are some pretty important warrant articles on the, uh, on the warrant, uh, I should say. <laughs> um, especially, uh, there is a citizen petition tomorrow night for a fire truck, a uh, claimed aerial apparatus. Um, and obviously, people around town have seen, I'm going to pull this over, Brian's looking at me, uh, pull this, um, there's a lot of signs out uh, for support of this. Um, I know that the fire department uh, is, is pushing this in, in their capacity as uh, private citizens. Uh, and uh, you know, certainly we've supported this as a board in the past. Um, and I would ask that we support it again tomorrow night. Uh, they've expressed the need for several years. Uh, and it's unfortunate that it had to come through a citizen petition. But it's on the warrant, uh, and I I'm supporting it, and I would encourage the board and the people of Longmeadow to do so as well. DPW shouldn't be the only department getting new trucks. I'm just kidding, Chris. I'm just kidding. All right. Support the, oh yeah, there's also a study for the DPW building, thank you, uh, tomorrow night on the warrant that uh, we should probably also uh, give so our support to. So. Okay. Any other comments down at that end? No comments, Joseph? Or are you waiting for your report? I'll just take my report. Okay. Any comments down this way, Michelle? 
I just want to make sure you know that visitors know that they're always welcome to come and talk at our at our meetings if they have concerns or whatever. I know from the correspondence you wrote back to her, but I just want to make sure people know that they are welcome and that we'd <coughs> like them coming and sharing their concerns because I think that's what makes us better. And um, you know that information that we had gotten from parents prior to that meeting was very helpful, and I think we we've learned we have some great improvements because of it. So I just want I want people to know that they're they should feel welcome to come. Anybody else? Okay. Can I just also add oh, one please. thing to one of the visitors' correspondence regarding Niche.com? So I'm looking at it right now, and the information on this website is just completely and factually incorrect. Uh, <laughs> regarding our annual budget, our annual per pupil spending, uh, so I'm not sure how relevant of a ranking it is. Not lot, to discredit them. A lot of those rankings are like one, uh, another site had uh, Lombard High School ranked, and they had a picture of ELHS. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, I know there's a lot of crowdsourcing that takes place here, um, and you know the comments on here are very nice and generous to us. But you know, a lot of this is, I mean, it's very incorrect. Niche.com is the one that did the survey. Yeah, not well known for its research. Much to our chagrin, it actually says we have a 47 million dollar budget, which I think we all wish was true. Wow, that would super. Be awesome. Maybe we should share that with the select board at their meeting. <laughs> it says it online, and it and must be true. <laughs> it, it must be true. It's online. <laughs> so, all right, that's all I have to say about that. All righty. So, well, I think the key on that is we, we're striving to be number one always, right? No matter who yeah. us at whatever, but we uh, strive so. to be number one, and we're always trying to improve, right? Always. <laughs> Absolutely. Trying to get that 47 million. We can try for that, too. Yeah. All right. With no old business, we will go to the superintendent's report. Okay, great. Uh, what is not on the handout is the transportation committee. We're looking for school committee volunteers to have a uh, subgroup that looks at transportation issues. We're looking at ways that we might consol consolidate some of the routes for next year because it could save us $50,000 for a bus. But we also just want to re-examine that and make sure that we're meeting the needs of all the students uh, in the district. So Janet, I'm wondering if you can find us a couple of volunteers. I was. I was going to ask, Michelle, would you be willing to yep. serve on that committee? And I was going to ask Michael, okay. who, who has left. <laughs> who left. Has left. <laughs> he knew he that. was going to be asked, so he left. No. I, I'm sure that he would be most interested as he's quite familiar with the, the routing. So we can certainly, and that's meeting with Tom, correct? Yes, yes okay. it is. So, so Tom, maybe we can set up a date after this meeting? Sure. Okay. Great. Now you can go on with the rest of your report. All right. As you know, we had parents at Blue, uh, from Blueberry here a couple of weeks ago. And I've spoken with several parents informally and several have emailed me as well to say that they're very happy with the changes that have been made. Um, parents, not patents, are very pleased with the units being offered by the teachers. And I do see Lynn and um, Beth here, so thank you very much because they've set it up so that students have choice between challenge units or uh, maybe doing some extra work in literacy and math. And it's been very well received by both the students and the parents, so that's great news. Second thing, we had that wind block meeting. I had representatives from all the schools, different grade levels, as well as special education and some of our specialists that teach math and ELA. We, uh, we met with central administration to talk about what's going on with the wind block. Overall, there are positive responses, but we talked about what's working and what's, what's, um, what are the obstacles. Some of the challenges were, for example, getting foundations, which is the primary phonics kit, into the rooms of teachers that are doing support in that area. Also thinking across, um, gross, could, you, could we cross grade students so that we're get maximizing some of our teacher time. There were scheduling issues for students who need support in more than one area. Uh, also providing challenge material at some grade levels. How are we going to integrate science and social studies into the literacy and more? The entire group's going to meet again in January so that we can follow up and continue these discussions. I've asked teachers to develop lists on what support they need from principals Susan Bertrand or me in order to be successful. Principals will also be discussing the wind block with their staffs at upcoming faculty meetings. I'm pleased with the progress of the new initiative. Uh, it's really a pleasure working closely with our teachers because they're very dedicated to our students and we have really some great discussions. 
In terms of communication, the administrative team and I worked out a calendar for sharing articles with the Longmeadow News. I talked to Hope Tremblay and she agreed to accept articles that we send in as well as pictures. So we developed a calendar for the year where we rotate between elementary, middle, high school and central office in terms of sending information to the Longmeadow News to make sure that we're getting them information on what's happening. We have a lot of great, great things happening in our schools, but we need to make sure it's getting to the newspaper. Several members of the school committee and I attended the MASC conference. That's the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. There were many workshops and we tended to hit a variety of them in order to gather more information. Some of the topics included strategic planning, tweeting and blocking, blogging, uh, receiving and giving feedback and more. I think one of the highlights for Kim and me particularly was, was a robot that can be programmed. It, when elementary students program it, it's a matter of dragging over little boxes and the programming, the programming is done behind that, whereas the middle school and high school students could actually program using a new pro, uh, using a program called Python. I asked Kevin to look into it, Kevin Waranda, Python. He said it's great. It's C plus and another um, highly used program that integrated together and he said it takes about 16 hours for a teacher or a program to learn it. So it sounds like a fantastic tool for many of our advanced students to be using. Susan Bertrand, it's in a following section, but Susan's meeting with the tech people and she's going to uh, call in the vendors so that they can take a look at that and see if it fits our needs and if that's something we can build into the technology. I also attended a conference on mentoring principals. There were 15 in the group when we talked about best ways to support principals in order to improve practices. Uh, we looked at team building activities and um, talked about how to support our support faculties. I plan on sharing the results with the administrative team and using the coaching techniques with my team. The Technology Curriculum Review Committee is underway. Uh, Susan Bertrand has met with the technology teachers from the elementary and middle schools to begin discussions on the technology curriculum update. Many of the teachers have already updated the curriculum as it's been changing, more equipments come in, and so they, they feel like they're in pretty good shape, but the committee is still important to have to make sure that we're sharing best practices school to school in this continuity grade level to grade level. I, again, I mentioned they will be looking at that robot to see if programming is something that we should include in the curriculum. I think it would be great to add that. It's really a hot field in terms of uh, career choices for kids. So to start them early and, and uh, enhance their interest in that, I think it would be beneficial to the students. <coughs> Strategic planning, we're in our fifth year of the strategic plan right now. The original committee was formed during my first year here and we worked on it during the second year to come up with specific goals that would show our uh, success in reaching the goals that were laid out in the plan. Since it's five years old, it's time to reconvene. I'd like to do that starting in January. Um, I think that we've accomplished a lot of what we set out to do, particularly in t literacy, technology. We've had math reviews, we've changed the curriculum. Most effectively at middle school, we're still working in elementary. But I'd like to have a representative committee with school committee reps, as well as community members, select board representatives, uh, town manager, parents, students, et cetera. So would you please let Janet or me know if you're interested in sitting on the tr strategic planning committee? And that is it. All right, any questions for Maureen? Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in sitting on that committee. Okay. Okay. All righty. Um, my report is pretty brief. I, I was able to attend the MASC conference, which was, um, it was a great time to hear what other districts are doing, how they're problem solving, how they're looking at the same issues that we are in terms of budget, in terms of challenges, in terms of how to get our students, um, you know, to achieve to their best potential. So. There were some great ideas that were brought out that I, I think we can look at incorporating pieces here and there to make our own district even better. Um, and I'm sure Joseph's going to congratulate the high school football team, but I will go ahead and, and extend my congratulations as well and best of luck to them this coming weekend. It was a great game. I was not there, but I heard it was a great game. <laughs> so Joseph. Sorry um, to steal your thunder there, Well, actually, I'll start with that. So uh, congratulations to our football team. Uh, they did a great job, 28-20, to 20, against East Longmeadow to take home the Western Mass title. 
and this Saturday they're off to uh, Lemonster to face Fitchburg in the first ever uh, state semifinals game for LHS because of the uh, and that is because they changed the championship system. So this is our first ever. I believe it's also like the first that has ever happened. So if they win this Saturday, they're off to December sixth um, Super Bowl. So I wish them the best of luck this Saturday. Um, senior class play is going to be happening this Thursday, this Friday, and this Saturday. Uh, Thursday and Friday are at 7 o'clock, Saturday at 2. Uh, tickets are $10 and can be purchased at the door, um, or from me here <laughs> now, um, <laughs> if anyone's interested. Um, in other news, LHS, we uh, completed our quarter one report card electronic delivery, our second pilot today. Uh, very exciting. We've expanded the program. So the first time, uh, well, we brought this to you about a year ago, and uh, you approved our idea, and it didn't cost anything, which is great, but we went out when we did it. Um, and basically, the last uh, quarter of last year, so fourth quarter of last year, we just emailed it to the parents. Um, and what happens is they get an email with a link, they click the link, they put in a password, and it downloads as a PDF right to their computer. We've expanded the program. So today, um, around first block, everybody got an email both to uh, their parents and their school Gmail accounts. Same system, a link, open it up, put in our password, and uh, they downloaded it perfectly. So that went well. Um, our survey for after school lunch, which we've been talking about, will go out in the next two weeks. As soon as, um, as, soon as the play ends, we'll be a little bit more uh, free time on the committee. And uh, that's about it. So yeah. I hope everyone uh, can come to our play. It's going to be great. It's uh, Disney's High School Musical. I, I think I forgot to mention that. <laughs> nice. All right, any questions for Joseph? We, just, we, uh, we do need to acknowledge the fact that Joseph has uh, succeeded in accomplishing a lot uh, in his two years doing this. He lowered the parking fee, <laughs> which that was the thing that cost us money. That's what he was talking about. But, <laughs> um, but the electronic report cards, that was something Joseph pushed for for what, maybe six months? Yeah. You had to work with Kevin on it. and mm -hmm. uh, So I think, you know, Joseph's done a, he's been doing a great job of uh, convincing us of his good ideas. I appreciate the, uh, the shout out, Michael. Well done, Joseph. Thank well you very much. You. All right. Um, finance subcommittee. I know John's not here this evening. Liz, did you want to <coughs> talk about finance sub? Um, would you like me to do the grant, the um, the bills first? No, that yeah. comes later. No, okay. No, well, the first number that we have is um, again our building use request, and, and we had talked about in our last meeting whether or not um, we'd have any conflicts with um, the times that they would need to that they would like to come in for their services. Okay, so and Tom was looking into that. Right. So Tom, did you want to? Yeah, so uh, I did talk to uh, Mr. Dunkley. There are, on average, eight to ten different events throughout the year that aren't necessarily in the auditorium. I would say about half of them are directly uh, rentals or building use of the auditorium for school-related functions. The other are events going on either in the school or the parking lot. Uh, some examples would be the Rays of Hope, use the high school parking lot and bus people over. Um, we also have a large uh, swim meet in January every year. They're not using the auditorium, but they have 2,000 individuals in and out of the building throughout the course of the weekend. The parking lot is packed, which would um, be an issue. Uh, some of the school-related events are um, music department rehearsals. Uh, the drama club has used it on Sunday for rehearsals. Uh, there's also been other rentals. Uh, Park and Rec uses it for their dance recital, and there are other two dance groups that rent it um, for the weekend. So there are, and I did um, share the information with uh, the church to let them know. Some of them we could probably work around. Others, they most certainly would be a conflict and create a problem either for the current group that's in the facility or if the church were to receive approval, we would have to let these groups know that the space is no longer available. So I'm not sure what other information you guys needed. Um, did we check parking too? I did speak to um, both the Park and Rec and to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, 
unfortunately, the Ramada Inn, where they were in between, has changed ownership since uh, since New Day has left the facility. So there wasn't anybody who I could contact who would have been familiar with uh, their rental. So, but yes, I did, and uh, everything was reported back favorably. So. Okay. So I think last time we had left it that we had voted and. The vote, Diane, the vote did not pass as it was presented. No, the vote did pass as it was presented, but it passed in a negative. So passed as a negative, right. but then there was an, a request made for researching further information. So at this point, with the further information, do we need to re-motion and re-vote? Entertain that. Entertain changing are they, this. Are they still look? Well, do they have to get back to you if they're still interested? The executive pastor is here. <laughs> oh, who could I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought you looked familiar. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> sorry. Sure. <coughs> sorry. Thank you for having no, me. Again. Drink, I wasn't going to get in here. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Cheers. I'm Andrew Charco, uh, executive pastor at New Day Church for the people that didn't meet yet. But Tom called me on uh, Friday. Thank you, Tom. And he gave me this update of 8 to 10, and he was gracious enough to talk that through a little bit with me because I was trying to figure out, is it really 8 to 10 times we wouldn't be in the auditorium, or is there other, or is it like there's some conflicts, but we maybe can work those out on the calendar. And so that's what I was trying to kind of figure out myself there. Uh, so in just talking to him, as a portable church, just one of the things that we have to deal with is being bumped. That just, that's par for the course that comes with the territory, so we have to kind of be prepared for that. And depending on what the situation is, sometimes, like, you know, possibly rays of hope or something like that, as, you know, as a church group, there's things that we want to be a part of in the community that we're part of to be a blessing, to help, to benefit, to be a part. So... I, we have to get creative sometimes in those ways, but I can see us being a creative help in a lot of those situations where maybe we say, we just can't be there that day, but we can do something to help. Uh, we can do something to bring some kind of benefit to the community. And so in that concept, it just kind of depends on what those are. So basically, if there were four, four times we could just like not be there, I think we can deal with that. So that would be from the eight to 10 side, if there's other ones that we could work through and maybe cohabitate at that same time. Particularly, let's say we get bumped from the auditorium. We'd be happy to go into the gymnasium if that would be open if the auditorium wasn't. Or with like a school play, if it's set up for the school play, we don't have to touch anything on the stage so long as we can be in there if there was a conflict in the actual time frame. Again, that's just kind of par for the course for a portable church, so we just have to deal with, with what's up. And sometimes it's kind of cool, to be honest with you. If there's a really great school play set, it's kind of awesome to look at that stuff and, and to be reminded that we're part of this community. We're in a school. We want to be a blessing to the school. We want to be helpful to the school. So that doesn't deter us in any way. Uh, but if it's like eight to ten times where we literally can't have church, that's probably more difficult. But I was hoping that we could maybe look at that. And, you know, as the possible last time to be in front of you, I just wanted to re reiterate some of the benefits that I feel like we can bring to, as New Day Church. We're bringing upwards to $80,000 of revenue. And I know it's not about money for you guys, but I know we talk about it. And it's the same is true for church. We talk about this all the time. It's not about dollars. It's about destinies. That's what we say at New Day a lot. Uh, but for you, it's the same thing. It's not about the dollars. It's about the students. But it takes money to do school, and it takes money to do ministry, we say often, too. And so I feel like that upwards to $80,000 of revenue could be very helpful. There was a concern brought last time we were here, which was about wear and tear. We're completely covered in insurance. We don't assume that we'll cause any wear and tear. We haven't done that in the five years we've been here uh, at the Hall of Fame that we currently are. And it looks like we got an okay uh, reference there. And so that's good. I'm glad to hear that. But uh, we have insurance to cover that if that even did happen. If there was ever a problem, that wouldn't be on Longmeadow. That would be on us. Because if we're the part of the problem, we intend to fix it. We would want to be those kind of renters. It just doesn't look good for us. We wouldn't, it wouldn't sit well with us. And then the other component of that is when we hear about clubs that maybe need some support or some help, we would love to be a part of that. Like we'd love to come in here if it's, we're in Springfield right now. That's what we do in Springfield. We do the backpack drive. We, we show up in droves to try to just help the community that's trying to help the education in that, in that district. Well, we would want to do the same thing. 
in Longmeadow or wherever our church ends up. And so we want to be a partner in that way. I mean, I even imagine us coming in, Teacher Appreciation Week, let's cater lunch for the teachers on New Day. We're not looking for anything in return. We're just recognizing that we're a part of this because you let us into your facility. That's a big deal. Of course we pay rent, and that money part's a big deal, but it's beyond that for us. We want to be helpful. We want you to like us. We want it to be a good relationship. We want to do what we can to help you. Uh, that's just kind of what our, our ministry is about. So when I think of those things, I think it's a really great fit, and I just wanted to be able to say that and talk that through so before people... I don't, and I, of course I'm biased, right? It's, it's New Day Church, I'm a pastor there, so of course I'm biased, but at the same time I feel like I don't see very many downsides to it other than a possible conflict that we're willing to work with when it comes to the dates. As long as other people are kind of willing to get creative with us about that, we'd, we'd love to try. Um, okay. Tom, did you want to speak... Um I, I know you and I had been speaking about the revenue and what we would be allowed to utilize it for and how we could utilize it so to, to make that clear for the, everyone on the committee. The fees from the rental would be deposited into the building rental revolving account and they are restricted for building maintenance expenses not necessarily just to the building that generated the revenue, but for school building rentals. So it wouldn't be discretionary for instructional materials. It would have to go to some sort of built-in maintenance expenditure. Um, so when I talked to Andrew, I did indicate the estimated fee would be about $75,000 for the uh, 52 weeks for the spaces they indicated in an additional 20,000 or so in custodial overtime again that's just an estimate based on assumed amount of overtime it you know we'll have to if it's approved we would have to look at how much overtime is really needed to make sure that all the spaces are in order for class Monday morning um, but the, the revenue itself would be restricted to uh, building maintenance expenses okay any buildings though not long Meadow high any so right any of the school any buildings, school buildings. Does anyone else have any questions for Tom or, or for our visitors? I do. Um, so uh, you're just looking for one year, one year commitment. Oh, right. As of now. Yep. And That's correct. We know we we won't be not portable <laughs> after a year, but we're looking for a year contract. So that's what we would look for. We're not looking for a longer term from you than that. Right. But we need at least a year. Um, and then our current contract states with the Hall of Fame is that we pay quarterly up front. So if we were upwards in you know, the, the range we're talking about here, something like around $20,000 check at the start of that quarter for three months, we're guaranteed that spot. And, and we're guaranteed for the year with you is what we'd like. But if we have to move for whatever reasons, because there's always a chance we move to Longmeadow. Not everybody follows us to Longmeadow. And maybe this isn't going to work out. And we would want to be able to say, we got to try something else. we got to do something different. It was, you know, we, we don't know all the future when we make these decisions. So that gives us an opportunity to say, for three months, we've decided this doesn't work. We'd like to right. take our belongings and we'll have to look for something else. Right. Um, but the commitment for the year helps us so we have time. If we outgrow the space or it doesn't work or we hear from you it's not working or something like that, which we hope wouldn't be the case. But, of course, if that was, we'd have time to, right. yes, find something different. Um, let's just say something goes goes wrong and um, do we have any clause or anything that you know that they don't have to stay for that long or that um, that we can end the contract do you know what I mean let's say you know, we throw an enormous party and break every single thing and we're just like you know we don't want that to happen any again so is there anything like that <laughs> we could develop an agreement based on the rental that would um, assuming we would want to give them at least a little notice that we are terminating the arrangement um, and would have to refund whatever revenue would be received. But I'm sure, yes, there would be certain parameters in which the committee would have discretion to decide they no longer want to continue the rental. Okay. Is that yeah. Anything else? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> we only throw three of those parties a year, so no worries <laughs> about that. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, 
you know, or do we need to make a decision tonight? I, I would love to see, like, letter. Do you have a letter of reference that we can look at, or were you relying on, on I, I us would, to just yeah. get? Do you have letters of reference? I could get some. I don't. Okay. Would that help people to, to look at them, or do we just? Put I, one? I don't. I don't know that a letter versus Tom's phone okay. call would be any more. But you only got in touch with one. Two. I spoke to oh, the basketball two. hall of fame and the uh, Long Meadow Park and Rec oh, okay. department. Okay. Okay. And and then you think that you two could work out so that you know I, I don't know that some things would mesh well you know in inside the building and and do you feel like I think one of the challenges will be storage. Uh, Andrew has said you know they're really interested in trying to find storage space. The school is. Uh, has no storage space so I don't know how we could accommodate them on site with storage I mean there most certainly could be options whether uh, we would want to put up any kind of rental I mean a, a storage unit on site somewhere I'm not sure how the community or the neighbors will would like that but in the building um, there is not an available closet to store the items that the church may need for their weekly service so I know that would definitely be a challenge that would have to be addressed. Yeah, and just to be, just for clarity on that, um, totally accurate. However, that's not a deal breaker for New Day. Uh, we kn we've been portable, for instance, when we were at the Crown Plaza, is what it was in Enfield, which changed over, I think, to the Holiday Inn. Um, we had a trailer, truck and trailer. And so that's the way we did it. We have the luxury now. We got a little spoiled at the Hall of Fame where they gave us two storage closets. And it really is great to have that. And wherever I have storage, I have to pay for that storage. So once again, if there is space at Longmeadow, I'd rather write you the check and give you the, re the revenue for that because it helps me because it keeps everything on site and makes things efficient. And it helps hopefully the, the school because you get more money that way, more revenue. And it, it, it kind of helps both in that essence. Unless there's not space, <laughs> then it doesn't help you. So I get that. So we just sometimes have to invest a different way for our storage solution. I wasn't at the last meeting when, when this was discussed. I unfortunately missed that. What was the what was the language of the motion that was made? Uh, he made a motion to reject the. Um, Let me get the actual offer. Of the John. Yeah. Okay. And obviously John's not here. So I think what we're talking about doing is entertaining a motion to reconsider. Correct. So under Robert's rules, I believe John would actually have to be the person to introduce that motion to reconsider. Uh, and we would need a two-thirds vote to reconsider that before entertaining a new motion. Since John's not here, I'm not sure we can actually proceed. Well, I think we made I made we made some sort of a motion to reconsider it. Does that not? Do you have language? No, there wasn't a motion. There was nothing. It was a re just a Diane's request for okay. My computer just froze, so I can't get it. <laughs> I'm ca I emailed Katie. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm working. I'm pulling them up right okay. now. Okay. Oh, sorry, because mine's frozen. Pressure, Katie. It is. It is. <laughs> like my computer is like completely. Did you have like four percent? I do. It's battery left too. Oh. So. <laughs> do I have it here? No. Just through an email. Do you want to look it up online? No, I've got it right here. Okay. I just I haven't even I haven't edited it or anything yet. So I'm just going to. <coughs> That's the thing is, John yeah, sorry, um, it's is not going to be at our next meeting. We're pulling it up over okay, here. So here, here the, Mr. Fitzgerald moved, seconded by Mrs. Bone, that the school committee deny the request as presented. Um, there was the discussion. Ms. Robinson asked Mr. Mazza if he calculated the impact. Um, the committee asked for more information before they proceeded um, with the determination at this time. But we voted four in favor as the, of the motion, and one in favor, and one completely abstaining. Then the motion passed. And you asked just for you made a request for more information, but we didn't make a motion that we then voted on. So we'd have to wait for John because there's not another motion on the table. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, because there were. The That's motion was an, to not accept the yes. offer 
four were in favor of not accepting. Right, one in favor, one, one abstain. So you mean. And that was the only motion that we made on that. That evening. Yeah. So it basically was John. So. Tuck him off the key. Okay. Okay, so we will need to put that on an agenda when we know John will be present. Um, when is he coming back? He won't be here for the eighth. We don't meet for another like five weeks then. You know, he won't be here for another five weeks. Because we don't. Right. We have, we have right. Now, uh, on, a, on, the 22nd, on a right, side but note. He's not going to be at that? No. He'll no. Be oh. uh, on a so side we'll note we'll regarding our meetings. Um, we are scheduled for December the 8th and December the 22nd. Um, John is not going to be here for December the 8th. And from what I've been told, historically meeting the week of Christmas has been difficult. So my question to the committee is we will need to approve warrants, um, but do we want to move do we feel that we need to have a second meeting in December and move it up to the 15th in well, order to do business, or shall we just meet during the day for those who are able to approve warrants on the 22nd and not meet again until our meeting in January? Not available on the 22nd. It's the week of Christmas and people are unavailable. I've just been told that it's been difficult for people to attend. If there's not a problem with attending, we'll keep the meeting as on the 22nd as scheduled. It's only ever been a real issue when it's been like the 23rd. Okay. On a Monday, just because that's like the day people leave. And okay. Stuff. But I, I'm, I'm fine with whatever time I decide. Okay. So then we'll keep the meetings for December as scheduled, which means John would be at the December 22nd meeting. Okay. So, so, Michael, so you said according to Robert's I'm rules, so he needs to John needs to be the one to, re one to reopen. Re yeah. And he needs a two-thirds right. vote by the committee. To reopen it. To overturn, to, to enact the motion to reconsider. Okay. See, one year for John bought me Robert's rules for work. So, Diane, can we make sure that that's on the that agenda for the 22nd? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your Robert's mm -hmm. rules book. It was a gift. It was a gift. It was a, it was a holiday gift from John, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Great. I'm glad you read that. All right. So I'm sorry, don't, but that will well, be tabled until Robert's rules in my December too. 22nd. <laughs> so you got to follow the rules. I Parliamentary procedure. I get it. I get it. So I didn't know if there was a way to do a new motion, but there isn't because of that. Because there of the motion to reconsider. Okay. Gotcha. Well, thank you for your time. Well, thank you again. I appreciate it. I'm reading Robert's rules, and anybody who voted in the majority can call for a re for a revote. Oh, oh, even if he's not here. If, if there's somebody else who voted in the majority, he's here. Okay, so Liz, the, Katie, the motion to reconsider may be made only by a member who voted on the prevailing side in the original vote. Okay, which is this? Which is opposed. Right. Liz, Katie, no, and it I. Would be Did you want to? Right. <laughs> I know. The yes to the no. Yes to the no. Yes to the no. We'll lose to it. What about the abstain? Sure. How do I say? You can. <laughs> I. You move. I move to um, reopen the motion that John made at our last meeting. <laughs> now, does it need to be sued? Does it need to be seconded by someone who voted? In. F it doesn't say. Okay. But you might as well second it just in case of <laughs> All right. So Liz motioned. I will second. So Can you second a motion. Why can't I second a motion? I'm already the chair. Which? Okay. I'll second the motion. All right. So you will you second, second the motion? I'll second the motion. Thank you. Katie seconded the motion. Gotcha. All right, so we are now reconsidering the original proposal. Can you please read the original proposal? Okay, so the original proposal was that, that school committee deny the request as presented. The request as presented, should I read the original? The request is from New Day Church to utilize Longmeadow High School Auditorium and some lecture spaces in the academic wing of Longmeadow High School every Sunday 
with the initial contract being one year, uh, according to the policy, the school committee has to come to do the number of participants and the re uh, repetitive nature of the request. Okay, so that is the motion that we are reconsidering to approve the request. To We're not approve. To deny the request. To deny yes. the request. Right. Wait, what? All right, so is there any other further discussion? So the motion is to deny the request of New Day Church. Any other discussion? All right, so those in favor of denying the request. <laughs> correct? That's the affirmative. Tom? Wait, wait, can I just add Tom? something? I want to make sure we're clear because we've already issued permits for May. So if by chance, if you approve this request as it is presented, we're going to have conflicts because you're approving it for Sundays for New Day Church, and we have already approved other, other contracts for later this school year. Okay. So I just want to make sure we're clear on the conflict you're going to create for the business office to manage facility rentals. You're so empty. Well, I just want to make sure. So, can we can we change the wording and and you know make it so that we're not doing it as presented before? We're we're considering a new lease agreement or something that I would don't know under Robert's rules with a motion being made and now asking for reconsideration if you can change that motion. I don't, think I don't so. believe you can but I, I know. Know. I'm not, not a Robert's rules expert. So wait a minute. So if we don't if we we're not approving it if we we're vote. we're approving to deny the request. So if we it's like the casino debate question. would only have two reasons <laughs> for reconsideration. And the original motion is open to debate only if the motion is for reconsideration passes. So I think you have to do a motion for reconsideration. Okay, so we, so the, we have so to withdraw the original motion and put Did forth a new motion to reconsider the a motion. revised right. request. Right, that's exactly right. So the first motion would just be whether we deny the original thing. It doesn't mean we're approving a new one. Correct. No, just you're opening it up just for reconsideration. I think I've, I I've been here for a while. Yeah. And this <laughs> sounds like a select board motion. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is straight out of down there. I know. This is All right. impressive, actually. So, are we ready to vote? What are we voting? What are we voting on? I don't, <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. I'm, I'm confused. The are motion we, you have is to deny the request, request. as presented. So, so if, you if you are voting favor, favor, you are denying, denying the request as okay. it was presented at the last meeting. Correct. And it was present, the request was presented for 52 weeks. For a year's Correct. contract. It's not to say that we would deny something that was less than 52 weeks that might include. If it is defeated, then you would have a secondary motion to approve a revised building use authorization subject to conflicts, if you so choose. But we have to get through the first motion Correct. first, which is the reconsideration of John's original motion. Which, where's my motion? But if we vote. So the, he, he moved that we deny the request as presented. This is the original request. Okay. Do you want me to read it once more? Yes, please. Okay. So the school committee was provided a building use request. The request went to finance subcommittee and they did not act upon it. The request is from New Day Church to utilize Longmeadow High School Auditorium and some lecture spaces in the academic wing of Longmeadow High School every Sunday with the initial contract term being one year. According to the policy, this request has to come before school committee. Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald moved that we deny the request as presented. So we're lo that's what we're moving on is to deny okay. the request. So an affirmative vote is to deny the request. Can I just ask a question? If that was already denied once, why couldn't we make another motion like we're going to make after that, like you're talking about, Tom? I'm just curious right. about that because you're going to be in the same situation you were just in, right. which okay. is if everybody denies that, we're right back to where we started before you just made that other motion. Right. Good point. Good we, we could make a secondary motion <laughs> under different terms, but there's a motion to reconsider on the table that needs to be voted on unless it's withdrawn by the person who made the motion. Liz, would you like to withdraw? I would draw my <laughs> proposal. <laughs> My motion, I mean. Okay, so now what would you all like? A, a new motion, right? Recon, uh, reconsider the motion. No, we're not reconsidering. You don't want to reconsider. Not that one. Let's make a motion to revise, revise the proposal and you work out. Yeah, help us here. <laughs> Whatever Tom said a few minutes ago. Well, yeah. it, would be, it would be a motion. A motion to approve the request 
subject to conflicts, you know, there'd be a solution when there are conflicts of uh, the New Day Church with other rentals of the space. I mean, I think the committee has to be clear. What if it's a school-related event? Are we going to give the New Day Church rental over precedent of a school-related function, whether it be music, uh, rehearsal, uh, play? I think, you know, this is an area we haven't dealt with too often because we usually don't see these type of lengthy rentals. Right. And we always check with the high school before to make sure that there's nothing scheduled um, on the dates in which we're being asked for. I think the contract needs to say that the, the high school supersedes um, the contract, but we'll make every effort to work collaboratively with the church. But we can't be bumping the play and the music productions. I, I understand, but I think that's challenging for the church because mm -hmm. if it's 10 times, then it might not be beneficial for them. Right, and I, do, and I feel like it's difficult for me to say that until I can actually look at a calendar with you and say which ones are... And I don't know, I know it's difficult for you because of the wor wording of the, you know, mm -hmm. of, of what your bylaws say about the school committee having to come in for these long-term rentals. Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming in the short-term rentals, you make that decision through the business office. We deal directly with the high school administration. And, okay, in high school administration. So I'm not trying to tell you how to do this, of course, but I'm thinking like, to, I've got, we got to try to figure out a way like which ones are okay to conflict and which ones are just a no-go, which I know you said for the high school ones. If it's, if it's conflicting with a play, of course, we just can't be in there. The high school is built for the high school students to do what you guys need to do, and we don't want to be in, in the way of that. But if there are ones that it's like we're simultaneous renters, and then you look at New Day bringing a large revenue in over the course of a whole year, it might benefit everybody if the other person could relocate to maybe the middle school, or, and everybody still gets to get the revenue, or is that too difficult to do? Because you said some are booked till May, which I didn't realize that component. So. So I'd like to see what those are because I'm willing to be flexible to move within the space mm -hmm. and then back off for any school-related you know, uh, event, which I was getting at the assumption was about four or five, but I haven't seen the actual calendar. So I don't know how we play that out without going through multiple school committee meetings to do that, which just belabors it for everybody, you know, and it's hard for us to act. It's like, I, but I feel like we could do that in a, in a meeting together. <coughs> Could New Day move to one of the middle schools on the on the rare occasion? Possibly, yeah. That, that's part of the flexibility component. So we try to be, but again, it's hard for me to say if we're doing that ten times. That's that's more difficult, and I'd have to go back. Mike's sick today, so he's not able to be here, and so I'd have to talk some of that stuff through to figure out is this going to work. But we feel like we can, you know, we can get creative, like I said. So we try to figure out. So who wants a motion? Well, I kind of feel like I don't know that we can make a motion now because we don't, I feel like, you know, we don't have sort of enough. The meat of a, yeah. Yeah. We would need the calendar and then I can, you know, I'm I, gonna, well, I'll, I'll move at this point because we obviously need, we have to go back and figure out what we're going to make work. I'll make a motion to lay on the table, to lay this motion on the table for further discussion at a, at a future meeting when we have more information about what that model would look like. Unless he wants some sort of an answer. You know, I, I don't I, think he knows where we're going to vote. So should we keep him hanging if we're going to reject something, even if we find, you know? Well, one of the things that I think is concerning to me is, you know, we just are, when we talk about putting things off, you know, just for high school events, well, we made a promise when we asked the community to support the high school that we would be open for community events, not just high school events, too, throughout sure. the year. Right. So things like park and rec dance recitals or park and rec plays, um, senior center activities. You know, we had we have really nice um, senior appreciation luncheons that come through. So saying to them, like, oh, you know what, guys? We have a 52-week commitment, and you're not high school. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your extra tax dollars. But, you know, and that's how they're going to see it, which sure. makes me really uncomfortable to <laughs> in that situation of having to decide like a long-term rental mm -hmm. and community members that we made this promise to sure. so it and I understand that I just feel like it'd be helpful if everybody could see what the calendar really looks like what are we really talking about here mm -hmm. for actually booked Sundays and I don't mean to be well and I already insensitive that because I agree a, with you 100 there are at least six or eight times there are booked Sundays so we will either have to move new day or move the rentals. Mm -hmm. There are at least three dance recitals, one of them being Park and Rec's dance recital. Mm -hmm. 
two others are private groups that have permits already in place for this spring, May and June, when dance recital is going on all over. So they book at the end of last year, they come back. So we already have dates that are booked. The, the swim meet is The booked. swim meet is coming up in, later in January. Uh, Raise the Pope took place in October. So, and then there are various states that the music department has used this. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they can't move it till evening or do it on Saturday. But as of right now, we have six to eight different events that either have taken place or would take place at some point during the year that are either high school related or, or permits have already been issued. So can you make a move to, to approve the for, to approve the rental from New Day, assuming that they won't that they agree to being bumped on those dates? Can you just make can you make that motion tonight to say that yes, we approve it, so long as they're bumped on the dates we have booked because through May. We can. And then at my that point then we can look at those and say my concern would be other high school events that we don't know about. Okay. If we're going to give them precedent, yeah. if they're going or are other items that come up that I don't know about or that the assistant principal didn't tell me about, sure. that number may jump by two or three more. Sure. So I don't want to miss. If one of the basketball teams makes, you know, semifinals, states, you're looking, you know, and that's something you wouldn't know. And that's something, you know, <coughs> how can you say you won't host a. A state semifinal game because we have a long-term commitment right. and I and I would just tell you this on that side from our perspective that happens to us sometimes with mass you know with Max's Tavern where we rent sometimes they book an event that they can make a lot of money more than our weekly rental though they want to keep us but they see that this is like a time like for instance in December we're getting bumped out of our kids space because they have an event that they make a lot of money on and they want to use it so the Hall of Fame accommodates us and it's not ideal for us but we're portable we got to deal with those things but it, again, it's, we bring in a large revenue stream, so they don't want to bump us a lot because they want to keep us there as renters. So I'm just trying to figure out, again, very respectfully, I'm just trying to figure out, can we do that here where it would be like, would the high school administration feel comfortable saying, New Day likes to be in here and it's very helpful to the community and to the school. Can we find another date for it? Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's not a great idea. Um, I, I feel that if you if we have things already booked for this year then we need to keep those kind of commitments mm -hmm. to the oh, school sure. everything sure. and then I feel that I know that you'd be paying us rent but we would you would need to be the flexible one for this year and then you know starting now if we know that every Sunday we're going to be there then the people coming to book from now on mm -hmm. would have to make those changes Absolutely. but the year out from now I don't think we're going to be able to change those dates for them Oh no, and I didn't want to do that. That's right, I totally agree, 100%. And I was just trying to get a feel for how often does these Sundays really people are showing up for basketball tournaments and is it's that really one. happening a lot where somebody wants to use on Sunday the high school theater facility particularly? Because the theater is the key component. I think we get flexible with the kids, but the theater, it will probably be the more difficult one to be flexible with. Mm -hmm. And that was just the feel I was trying to figure out. Because if it is a lot of that, it's a risk for us too. And we're trying to figure that out too before we up and move. But if we feel like it's not, and we can try to be flexible and try our best to get New Day in there, I feel comfortable with that. But I just wanted to make sure. So we know there's about six in between May and June, just those two months? No, January. Well, no, no, just in those two months, there's six, and then there's others? There are, like I said, three different dance recital uh, scheduled for May and June. There's a drama club presentation in May. Um, last year, Paul gave me three years worth of data. There were uh, music department rehearsals in June on Sunday. So, like I said, there are about half of the conflicts are directly related to the auditorium space. The other half are either parking lot or the, bas the gym, and I know things could be worked out around those. Again, these were dates that it was in use for some school-related or permit-related event, half of them are auditorium directly related. And we've not, and, and we should be clear, we've not ever asked the high school to book their own space this far in advance for the music department, for the drama department. So this is something new, you know, for them as well. So we do give them the dates for the dance recital so they we, know we do that give that up. but yep. now in terms of looking at a long-term <coughs> rental yep. so, so just knowing 
that there, it seems like most of May and part of June would be not feasible in the auditorium, probably. I mean, does that even feel like something that you even want to continue to pursue? Yeah, possibly. I mean, especially May and June, because it's warmer. We have better solutions in warmer months. We can do a tent from Taylor Rental. We can get, like I said, pretty creative, as we've had to do for being a portable church this long. Right. Uh, you know, it's again, we can, you can get spoiled where you are. We understand we don't have a building. That's why we want that tool one day for our own. We don't want to be here forever because <laughs> because there are inconveniences to that. But it's something that we'd have to deal with for the, the benefit of having access to a large auditorium for our people. If we, if we make a new motion, should we say all the, you know, ifs, ands, and buts in it, or? I don't necessarily know that your motion has to reflect that, but I would think the contract, whatever agreement gets worked out formally would, New Day would want to include all of the concerns that the committee would have. And should we send a note to anyone in, the, like, a princ the principals or anything, and just ask them if they, if they see anything in the next year that we don't have on the calendar that we should <coughs> put on the calendar? I could I check know. with Mr. Dunkley and see if, you know, there are <laughs> events or you could, you know, talk to the music department and drama club and see if they have events that they know of but haven't necessarily put it on the calendar yet for him. I don't know, just something to look at. Just so we have full clarity. Mm -hmm. So where are we in our motions? <laughs> Don't laugh, Sue, I'm confused. So we withdrew the reconsidering motion. I, I have that. I moved to lay on the table, but and nobody seconded. And you may move to lay on the table, but no, nobody seconded. no one seconded that. So. Lay on the table with what? To put, off to, a future put off to a future meeting when we could reconsider with more information. And I guess I kind of agree with Michelle, is how much more information do we need? I mean, un except yeah. for the actual specific dates themselves, what more information are we looking for? I think if, if we make it so that we have the ability to say we, we can't, uh, and we give you, you know, enough warning, but if that was the contract and we said if, if there's something that we feel we need to keep the building for, you know, we'll offer possible alternative space or, you know, you just can't use it then. If the contract says that, then, you know, can we vote on? And I'm fine. And I'm, we're, you're, we're, we're fine, fine with, with that. that I, and I'll I, tell you right now that I don't have that luxury in my current contract. I'll just be upfront with right. you. If they told me tomorrow I can't meet this Sunday, I'm not going to be able to meet there this Sunday. Okay. But they also look at the whole picture, like I would assume that the Long Middle right. School District would right. do. And, and they would I say, we don't want, we want them here, so we want this to be good. So we don't try to do that. But if you had to tell us that, you could put that in language that says, if we can't have you, we got to let you know we can't have you. And I would be trusting that our relationship would be of <laughs> the caliber that we would try to let me know. That would be great to have that language. I'll let you know three weeks, but sometimes you maybe won't have that luxury. And that, again, is just the reality of our life as a portable church. It's always a bummer when I get that call, by the way. You know, we, a week out, I do appreciate the month notice. It's, it's super helpful to me, but yeah. I feel like we could be under that kind of agreement. And if this is your building, we don't have one. That's, that's the point. And so we have to, to succumb to that. Yeah, because I, I mean, I agree. I don't want the dance recital to have to get relocated or anything like that. I think that's what this building is for. But if you are willing to take the space when it's available to you. Sure, and I think I what would be cool if the language could say something like, we will try to accommodate you in another building, maybe something like that, if that's a possibility. Like, I think someone raised that option. Mm -hmm. And as long as that would be an option, knowing that our ideal is always the high school and we're always trying to get us in there, but on those off times when we can't reschedule, we'd like to place you there. And then if this was a good relationship, maybe the next time we wrote up a contract, we would try to get New Day to be in there for that first event, and maybe somebody else would want to relocate, or maybe not, and then we would just be fine with that. But having an alternative already in the town we're in would be huge, you know? So I don't have to rent a tent. <laughs> I can maybe go to a middle school or something like that. And just There's one other piece I want to make sure we're aware of, this snow removal, and I did speak to Andrew about it, but we don't control the DPW who does snow removal in the parking lots. On the weekends, anytime, DPW does snow removal of the lots. The custodial staff is responsible for clearing snow on the sidewalks. So um, that too may 
encumber your uh, availability on a Sunday, even though the storm has passed, they're not going to prioritize the high school parking lot for rental when they're out doing the street. So I just want to make sure all, everything is on the table in regards to uh, consideration. I don't know if I did let Andrew know about that. Yeah, we're clear about in that. In our conversations. Yeah, and we understand that. It's actually easier for me to cancel church when there's snow. It makes more <laughs> sense, you know, just we're good with that. I can I can do that like a school with. So that's, I, you know, if I have to cancel it, those are the ones that are kind of an okay one. <laughs> I get a freebie on those. <laughs> I get a pass. All right, so since there's no, there, right now there's no motion on the table. So, so if someone would like to make a motion. To, the motion would be to approve the request with alterations with the <laughs> with su subject to the uh, I would say that <laughs> you would want to approve a building use request um, for the use of the high school auditorium and uh, seminar spaces as indicated in the rental request um, with the exception of conflicts as identified uh, by the business office make that motion okay so Kim has moved do I have a second second so we have a motion in a second any further discussion <coughs> all right so the motion before us is to approve the building use request as with the modifications presented um, I'm sorry to approve the building use request for the auditorium and seminar spaces as presented with the exception of conflicts as identified by the business office identified by the business office all right so all of those in favor of approving the request two I oh sorry three I those opposed to the request. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Motion fails. Okay. What happened to that? Motion fails. It did not pass by two, by a simple majority. Correct? It was a tie. Okay. That's Sorry. in Robert's rules? Okay. Just checking. I didn't get the book from John. So Sorry. Fail? I, I sent you a cheat sheet just now. <laughs> I know. I can't open can't it open yet. It but <laughs> all right. All right. Who made the motion? We have that. Kim made the motion and Liz seconded. And it was Kim, Michelle, Liz in favor. Michael, you and I opposed. Got that right? All right. You got everything, Diane? Yep. All righty. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I Thank appreciate you. it. And I can I just say that Tom's been wonderful to work with. <laughs> I just want to, no, I do want to say, and so has Sue. You just have wonderful staff here. You did a really nice job working with me. I really appreciate it. It's been Thank very you. helpful and upfront. And I think you should know that. Thank you very yeah, much. And I also want to maybe request, I don't know if we're even able to do this, but maybe in the future, we're always going to have seating issues. So I don't know if we're able to come back and revisit this at times. Obviously not next week. I get that, but <laughs> maybe in a future time when the building's been used more and maybe you get a feel for this as a possible option. I don't know if you're okay with that, but as long as Tom's okay, I might shoot you an email in the summer or something like sure. that to Absolutely. see where we're at. Okay. That way it gives us a feeling too of of how it's being used since we're just really getting into a full year here. Yeah, so. sure. So thank you for your time. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very thank much. You. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, so. Tom, you've got grant. Yep. So um, finance subcommittee reviewed a memo dated May, uh, sorry, November 4th regarding the approval and acceptance of the FY15 grants. Um, there are uh, seven or eight grants listed in the grant award amount for FY15. And by policy, the committee has to accept the grants. How these sort of stack up, idea and specifically the grants from fiscal year 2014. If it, you, um, you don't have to dig for it, but I'm just curious to see if it's. 
Um, yeah, we the IDEA amount is about seven thousand dollars more than it was in FY. 14. Um, Medco is probably just about the same. I believe it's uh, about $5,000 more. There was a substantial increase in the Title I grant, um, about $70,000, $80,000 more than FY14's amount. Um, in, in terms of all the rest, they're about the same. Title IIA uh, was about $50,000 last year. Uh, SPED program improvement. Uh, was actually about uh, 12,000, so that's gone up uh, a small amount. And the academic support was uh, just about the same also. It's, it's a small amount. Okay, thank you. Um, I move on the recommendation of the Finance Subcommittee that the School Committee accept the FY15 grants as specified in the document titled FY15 Grant Award Memo dated November 4th, 2013. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Budget revision. So the next step would be now that the committee has accepted the grants, as part of our budget process, we estimate what the grant amounts will be and how to allocate it or appropriate the funds uh, as we develop the budget. Um, since the amounts have changed from what we estimated during the budget process, uh, you have a request in front of you to actually uh, approve either the recognition or reduction in any grant amount based on what we estimated and what the actual award amount would be. So it's a line item revision for the FY15 uh, budget for grants and special revenues. Okay. Do I have a motion? I move on the recommendation of the Finance Subcommittee that the School Committee approve the budget revisions as outlined in the document titled Grants and Special Revenues Revision FY15, number one, dated November 4th, 2013. Do so I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Do you say four? Do you say four? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Could I just ask we do capital? Mr. Reed is here. Yes, capital. I was going to, to move him next. I didn't think we had anything else from finance. No, that is it. All right, so capital planning for FY16. I'm ready. Okay, take it away. So about a week and a half ago, Chris, um, Tom, myself, and, and uh, Marie sat down to talk about uh, the priorities that we would like to submit to both community preservation uh, and the select board slash capital planning for their consideration. Uh, it's important to note that previously, uh, up until this year, the select board had a different scope for what they considered capital planning. It was previously $10,000 uh, in items that would last 10 years or more. It's now 30000 25000 sorry, 25000 which limits the scope of, of what we're able to submit um, and has also, you know, and challenged us to maybe, you know, uh, talk about doing more enhancements uh, that need to be done instead of staggering them into se separate projects, doing them more at once. Uh, and so, obviously, some cha some that was that was a major challenge. Luckily, we didn't run into too much of that this year because the stuff we're asking for uh, is on the higher side. Um, and so, obviously, you know, I'm, I'll allow Chris to kind of walk us through some of these things. Uh, but essentially, the, the first priority, the, the list that you have in front of you, I should say, uh, was, was put in this order at the meeting that we had a week and a half ago um, based, on, based on our discussion. Yeah. Um, you know, it's by no means the order of priorities that the Select Board and Capital Planning will receive from the town manager, uh, but it's certainly what we are prioritizing as our highest uh, priorities. And so I will hand it over to you to talk about the center school stairs, um, among other things. Sure. So... <clears throat> We put these to, excuse me, <clears throat> I had a little frog in my throat. Put these together based on safety concerns. The center school has the exterior stairs. Uh, the nosing on that ex ex exterior stairs is coming apart. The stairs are d dilapidated. So we put that kind of high on our, on our list. Are these the stairs in front of the building or in the <clears throat> So they're one that go to the playground. Okay. 
And including in that are the ramps that go to the gym and the, uh, the two ramps also. So, uh, and we had our, our in-house architect, Ryan Hart Associates, do an estimate on that. So that's why we came up with the, the price on that. And that will also be submitted to CPA. That qualifies. Well, we'll try. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the next project is the boiler replacement at Glenbrook. If you remember last year, we replaced uh, more, mostly internal casings on, on one of the boilers at Williams, correct? No, we did a full, we did a full, full removal on that uh, so replacement. So this year is for the 20, it's to replace the 20 year old boiler at Glenbrook. I think Katie had a question yes. on the Williams. So I thought like that was a. Didn't go quite so smoothly, sort of. Um, <clears throat> there were some hiccups in that, but that is in place, and there was a lot of great improvements with that. They, they actually. So, um, I, but I, I guess, like, are we going to face the same kind of issues at Glenbrook? Well, Glenbrook? we we aren't because I again I used the uh, in-house architect to give us a, a, an estimate. Um, I think that was part of the problems. It was. It, he wasn't the same guy who gave us. That the, was Cody. Uh, no. Okay. And if you remember last year's boiler that they were talking about was $70,000 yeah. was the quote. So this is obviously sig and this significantly is for more. One. Did they have two at Glenbrook? Like no. I know we have two at Williams. They have two at Glenbrook, and then we'll be, but we'll be replacing one. The, the, there's a, the, I think it's uh, about six years old. This is the newest one at Glenbrook. The one we'll be replacing is a 21-year-old at Glenbrook. Okay. It was actually brought over from high school. It was at the high school for about nine years or something like that, and they brought it over to Glenbrook. And we had talked about in this meeting what would happen if, let's say, this 20-year-old boiler failed. Um, the primary issue that we would run into was getting some, getting a custodian or someone into the building to actually fire up the newer boiler, because it'll take several hours to bring the entire building to, to a level. It was the same, yes, yeah, the yeah, same kind of A lot of slower than it would be. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we don't get ourselves. We may not actually have the capacity. Right before but. school starts, that we have the same issue. Yeah. So. Good news about Glenbrook is that it actually holds its heat pretty well. Yeah. <coughs> um, the next project wasn't really Can I just a deep address that? One mm -hmm. thing that Chris, Tom, and I did talk about, the boilers, um, the boilers are not <coughs> speaking to each other, right? That's correct. They, they, they can't work together. And one thing at we Glenbrook. watched. At Glenbrook. But I thought that was an issue at Williams, too. Not anymore. Not, okay. So one of the issues that we need to watch closely is, um, is what the heat will no, go up right. to with one boiler. In the past, the when the winters are cold, the rooms only get up to 5860. So I think the school committee needs to be apprised of the situation that should we get into um, a situation where the boiler's not getting enough heat, we may have to ask the town to push this up. Chris is going to monitor it. He's got a good handle on it. But uh, if we have, we have cold weather and the boiler can't heat the building sufficiently, we're going to have to ask the town to act on that. Chris, why are the boilers no longer speaking to each other? Mm -hmm. the heat they, uh, when they did that, when they did that uh, the most recent boiler, I think the that's six when. six-year one. Yeah, that's when they lost the, um, it has to do with a three-way valve and a difference in pressure where um, when they both go on, there, there's a problem with the older one. Okay, so for the last six years, they've not been Yeah, in I, I can tandem. look into that, but yeah, 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 yeah. Like a mechanical system. It's a pressure, pressure system. Don't you just get mad? Like in the winter right now, the rooms don't get that one? They weren't when one boiler would go down. I would get calls from the principals that the buildings were um, extremely cold and <coughs> too cold for kids to really be working in. So I think we just need to monitor this very closely. We did, you know, I think that the select board also needs to be informed that if anything happens that we may be coming asking them to readjust budgets or find money to do this sooner than later. If the temperatures were able to get up to a reasonable temperature, then that's fine. We certainly want to work with the town on this, but I just want you to be aware there have been days it's been too cold and if only one boil is working. Although the real issue, not to, not to you know, but uh, the real issue is that if a boiler does fail and we can't get it going, uh, it's going to be about two months potentially before we get a new one. This is the same issue we had with the last one. Yes. Why didn't they do them both at the same time? Um, we, we had no money. money. <laughs> we had no money. Uh, they were both on the list though last year. The yeah. Glenbrook one was ranked one below the, the Williams one. The Williams one at the time was failing consistently. This one hasn't been failing as much. Yeah, that's correct. It's and just I, end of life. I know yes, Chris right. is new, but the situation's gotten worse from my understanding of when I was last surprised to this last year. So so just so I understand, this is going to be a brand new boiler, not just like replacing the inside of it? Yeah, 
Com new, completely new. And it's something that we could theoretically move to, say, a newer-ish middle school. Yeah, I guess so. I could look into that, but yeah, it's really and that would be kind of, that would be. We did that in other schools. And then I guess just to <coughs> for clarity, what was the work that was done at Williams was refurbishing. No, we replaced one. It fully, was fully, completely fully replaced. replaced. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fully replaced. I thought we. I, I thought we. Replaced. Initially, the was the quote was to replace valves and uh, to replace, I guess, casings on on one of the boilers. That was the seventy five. Well, initially, 000. it started with that we were going to get a high efficiency boiler, which that well, never initially transpired. what we were told was completely incorrect. It was going to be a magic <laughs> boiler that like lowered all of our heating. Yeah. The and board. then it was Everybody that was with warm. the amount that was appropriated, they could do the panel or they could do one part of it. Right. And then we heard that the work was done, but so now it, it wasn't just the panel and it wasn't just the valves. It's a, yeah. It's a new boiler. It's a new boiler, and I think it's important to note that Don, the custodian at uh, at um, at Williams, is reporting no problems. Yeah, and better than better than better ever. than no problems because they they actually re fixed a few few plumbing problems. Restriction issues when they put the new one in. So, so Williams is not an issue as far as boilers go. No. At this moment in time, but I'm sure I just jinxed that. Okay, um. I, I'm sorry. I, I know that, that went so off topic, but but we need to keep our eye on Glenbrook and right. be prepared to talk to the select board should the temperature not be satisfactory. Is there a way? Can we do that? That like we won't have this money, capital money until May. It won't be available until July first. So, we can right. we can pre you know we, we can, can go out and get the it. specs. Yeah, we can pre spend it. A bill won't be paid until July first. That's the when the money will become available. And then with bid and have a contractor lined up to come in and start the work in September, we cannot spend it before July. Right. So what happens if they go down then? That's what I mean. Like, can we? Then we we have a we have a, a different situation where we have to begin looking at moving students. They'd, they'd also money wise have to bond or free cash to come up with something. I suggest that the chair of the school committee have a conversation with the chair of the select board and notify them that that is a concern of ours, and that should we need to move before this process is done, that they're just yeah. notified. We might. We Can we do that without a special town meeting? They could issue a bond anticipation yeah. note. Yeah. And then rectify that bonding, either pay it off out of the operating budget through debt service or um, actually bond at town meeting. The boiler at Williams, do you remember how much that one was? Yeah, it was um, 109000 by the time Is we got done with it. Is it a different size than this one? No, it should be the same size. I think <clears throat> this estimate might be a little high. Better than a little low. Yeah. No, I. I yep. completely agree with this corner, like, yep. but you know, ninety thousand dollars is a big difference. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you know, ultimately, what we can, what we should be asking for is that you know, obviously the bids get a little bit more, or the the quotes get a little bit more firmed up, but that when town meeting appropriates money through capital planning, that you know, we don't have to spend it all. We can return that money to to capital. Because we don't want to get backed into a corner. Right? And we don't want to get backed into a corner. Yeah. And we don't have enough. So the next so project. Um, is an IT project, which is not a DPW project. It is uh, the installation of a backup battery system that would keep the networks online uh, in the instance of a short-term blackout. Uh, right now, we don't have anything like that in place, and you know, obviously, all of our networks are they they are redundant in a sense. They go between the police department and and here, uh, but our phones are out of here. Uh, you know, and most mission critical systems town wide run originate here. Um, and while they, they ha there's a little bit of redundancy, it's an important uh, mission critical uh, project. And what I had asked Kevin to do was to see if there was any grants available through the Mass Emergency Management Agency. There's not anything for something that's not uh, an emergency uh, preventative. Isn't that kind of what it is? It kind of is, but because it's not for a sustained long term emergency, we're taught the battery wouldn't last probably more than 12 hours. Not even. It's yeah. Well, it's a big battery. They're closets. <coughs> they're not just one. It's throughout the entire town. Oh, it's throughout all the entire of town. The um, uh, data closets, not just mm. one for the MDF, which is here at the high school, but the individual closets in the building. Because mm. um, now the phone systems operate. So if there were a powder a power outage in a building, the phones would go down immediately, unless we can keep the network up and running for a period of time. And that's what the goal is here. 
so that if there are any issues during that time, they can still receive and make phone calls. This is guarding against power outages at LHS? No. That would, or any, that would affect the whole network. Yeah. Don't we have a, a generator? We have a generator on Meadow High School, but it doesn't impact, but they're not, the phones aren't necessarily networked directly through the high school. Oh, okay. So each individual, there's individual closets where there's certain networking um, equipment. So we obviously want to make sure that obviously the police department and fire department have their own backup generators, uh, but we want to make sure that Council on Aging, Town Hall. the other schools, we do have four, five other schools that don't have a generator. Well, Center School has one, right? Um, but it doesn't the operate there. It doesn't. MDS. So. so, yeah, it only operates the cafeteria. And um, we uh, we uh, run the phone systems for the, all those things. You just listed fire department and yeah, police department. Yeah, we maintain all the technology for the town. So, obviously, this is something that I think uh, we would be <coughs> crazy not to uh, ask the select board to, to agree with, but we've been dealing with it so far, so... Um, the fourth is yet another exhaust fan replacement at uh, Williams Middle School. Yep, this is a <laughs> this is to replace the final seventeen exhaust fans, the seventeen yep. that are left. So obviously we've been doing these for years. Uh, this is I think the third or fourth year that we've had exhaust fan replacements at Williams. Uh, the air handler replacement is a big ticket item. It's number five on there. Obviously this is an end of life issue mm -hmm. uh, for this system. Um, we didn't rank it as high, um, obviously, because of the fact that this committee may or may not be submitting an SOI in the future, but also because uh, it's still working, um, yes. you know, and, and we'll continue to make the necessary repairs, but it will have to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, number six is the black top at Center School, not to be confused with all the work that we've already done at Center School. I we, did that. we didn't we do did the black top. We did, we did the playground and the grass. And the grass. The grass. The blacktop is, is just a simple repaving, although it's $70,000, so it's not that simple. Um, so I think we're going back, we've, we've, we're going back and, is and make- Is that ruin the grass? <laughs> no. Because that would really no. just be a little too much to um, handle. You know, right now it's just, uh, it's- I don't know, wouldn't it, make, wouldn't it make sense to do that first, then do the grass? Uh, you know, you, you only asked for so much when you were pushing for that playground. Uh, okay. I'm just kidding. Um, so, right now, I mean, it could it's a, it could potentially be patched in certain areas. I don't know if it needs a. a it's kind of just one of those maintenance items that could be potentially a safety risk down the road. Um, but obviously, we didn't feel that it was a high enough safety risk to place it high. You know, in the first three. Uh, number seven is. Uh, placing netting along Bliss Road and Blueberry Hill around Russell Field. This would potentially be a community preservation project. Um, basically, this a very similar project was proposed for Wolf Swamp Fields, but obviously this is a very different situation in the sense that there is a lot of traffic that travels down Bliss Road. Uh, and frequently balls from softballs, lacrosse balls, soccer balls, will frisbees. frisbees, will enter Bliss Road, and that's obviously a danger to to drivers, it's a danger to students who run out to grab uh, those balls, and so we'd like to potentially keep uh, keep them on the fields. So that's the community preservation. Can we do the blacktop under <coughs> community preservation too? Because they did our playground. Yeah, I can. I could look into that. I mean, it's mostly for sportswear, so it's, that's recreation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I can look into that. This um, Russell Field is uh, is the scoreboards also. Oh, uh, scoreboards will enter there. Yep. And and the softball uh, backstop preservation okay. too. For the same issue. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, the scoreboards, we're talking about the one by the baseball diamond, correct? Two, Are there three of them? There's two, and then there's a portable one that we have. That we have. Okay. This is all three of them, or is this? Yes, it's be all three correct. of them. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, refurbish the terrace outside of the gym. This was actually a project that had passed at Center School. Center School. And this is the, it was originally called the Esplanade, but we had that changed because I think we all thought that the, level above the library was the Esplanade. Um, this was a project that actually initially yeah, yeah. passed community preservation, um, or actually no, passed this, this committee, it was brought to the Historic Society. At the time, Adrian had proposed this plasticized um, synthetic material, material, synthetic material, that looked like it was that stone, but obviously it was plastic and much more endurant. They rejected that. Um, and so right now, the cost is $135,000. It's worth bringing back to them. It's a different board, uh, 
but again... Wait, wait, this is not plastic, right? This is like for real... This That's is correct. real stone. Okay. This is real masonry. Concrete. Putting it back, yeah. And this, um, and this again was the uh, in-house architect that did a study on that. And this is going back to CPA with the repair of the stairs, too? Yeah. Okay. Um, is it going back to CPA? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously this is at the bottom of the eight that we prioritized for this year because ultimately it is not, uh, it's, I mean, it's a safety risk, it's unsightly, but we also don't have to send kids out the doors by the gym. They can go up and around and down, which, you know, obviously is not as ideal. It's not ideal to go out onto the green, but that's might be what we have to do. Right now they are in significant disrepair, but we have options, which is, which is why this is not highly prioritized. Um, inside your packet here, you'll find that we have a bunch of non-prioritized projects uh, by school. You'll notice that the Long Meadow High School air handler replacement is on there. You might be wondering why. It's the one, I think, above us right now uh, that recently caught on fire. Um, but we got it working. Wouldn't that, that doesn't fall under the purview of the school building committee and the this was a renovation, um, and at the time there was a cost-benefit analysis made uh, by the school building committee to not replace that. Um, so I have estimates of um, to re to get all replacement parts for each of those air handlers. Yeah, it's like ten thousand each. How many There's are two there? Two air handlers. Two. two. So I mean that was something that was on the list last year that went before community pr or went before capital planning. Obviously, didn't make the cut. Um, more Glenbrook enhancements, uh, you know, enclosing the library. If you go to Glenbrook now, you'll notice that the library is one of the only spaces besides the sixth grade classrooms that are not enclosed. Well, um, none of the classrooms are enclosed. Well, they have walls. They just don't have tops and bottoms for HVAC, but the library doesn't have any wall around it. We well, have walls around it. It has openings and there has are no doors. Large openings, though, because it's like shelving. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Different than the walls they constructed around the classrooms outside the library. Um, obviously, new energy management system uh, is is on there. Obviously, we'd prefer a boiler before we get the management system in place. Um, an elevator has been on there for years. Obviously, right now, uh, for ADA compliance, they use this very scary looking stabilizer that goes down the stairs like this. Um, How old is the roof at Glenbrook? Old enough. Yeah. Like, are we talking end of life mm -hmm. or beyond end of life? Yeah, yeah I don't know the exact um, age of the roof, but it's getting... It's about, I think it's about 19 years old. Yeah, I was thinking 20 or 19 years yeah. old. Same at Williams. They're yeah, both they're very, roughly yeah. around the same. Yep. And generally they last about 20? Yeah. Have we done Nothing that we, we've been yeah. being able to take care of it in-house. Yeah. It'll yeah. go right with the boiler. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, um, so obviously at Williams, we have the uh, energy management system, student locker replacement, which has been a favorite of this committee's for years, uh, window replacements, parking lot resurfacing, and then roof replacement. A lot of the projects between the two sc middle schools are very similar. Um, at Blueberry, uh, they're looking, and I believe also same at Wolf Swamp, they're looking to, the police department has requested an access road be paved around the building. So right now they are capable of driving around that in the winter, at least ruts. Uh, they're looking for something that could just be plowed um, instead of them having to drive off. But they have these nice new SUVs. Can I interrupt one sec? Yeah. Chris, with a fresh pair of eyes, could you please look at the Williams lockers? The mm -hmm. staff and the principal feel they need to be replaced. I think the um, f former facilities director felt that they didn't. But when I go over, things are hanging out of their lockers. They're falling out. Um, we had some report that said most of them were functional. I don't observe that when I'm walking through the building. So I'd appreciate your feedback on that. Okay. This has always been placed lower on the list because of the recommendations from your department, but I, I would concur with the principal and staff. The lockers are in pretty bad condition. All right, I'll look at them again. Thank you. So, yeah, so then uh, obviously the access roads, that's just more of a convenience factor for the police department as they do their patrols, obviously. Um, also in the near future is the playground replacements at both Wolf Swamp and Blueberry. Um, I think we were looking at 2017 for those, 2017, 2018. For both, one for in each year? Pretty much. How do, you get, how do you get, like, grass added to that? You do what Katie did. Yeah. No, because center has irrigation, blueberry. No, 
Wolf Swamp does not have irrigation. And neither does Blueberry. And neither does Blueberry. Neither and did Center. We had to reinstall it. They had it, though. But, yeah, it was had it was but you had something. Um, I'm just saying, as a parent, the condition that your children's leg bodies are, like the dirt and filth that comes in on these kids, and I can't imagine that it's safe for them inhaling it as they're running around playing soccer. Oh, yeah. Just well, that, I mean, it's, it's the same... It's, it's the same situation that we had at, at Center. Uh, I mean, I think it's important that we, we address it, but... Um, Maybe know. it would be good to get the um, fields and maintenance agreement going because you're right, the conditions of the fields continue to get bad. We've invested a lot in Center. I know, Chris, you're new, but the history goes that there were irrigation at some of the buildings that were never mm -hmm. done. They were broken. But the fields at Wolf Swamp were deplorable. Blueberries getting run down. Center needed to be completely redone. But the kids are playing there all the time. And it's a it's a safety issue. They should be able to run and fall without coming in with um, cuts and bruises yeah. in the condition of the playgrounds. That's, that's an issue. Um, and then, obviously, um, there's wallpaper and painting. That's also been an item that's like, appeared year over year. That's a maintenance issue. Tom has requested in the past that the wallpaper be removed. Right now, what happens is that you know kids will walk along and they'll take a, where the fold's coming up with the glue and you know rip along it at like center school, for instance, becomes dirty. We'd rather have a, a surface that we could either clean or paint over. Um, you know, and I think that that's the custodian's feeling on it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then okay. finally, window replacement at Center School. Everybody's favorite. It is um, my favorite, and I'm still I'm wondering why we have this at nine hundred thousand dollars when we got it approved, but then it wasn't enough. You mean because it was approved originally at yeah. two hundred thousand? Uh huh. Yeah. But like, so, all right. anyway, but the fire alarm. I'm not sure about that one. Oh. oh okay. Uh, I'm not sure about the windows, but. I oh yeah, I did want to speak to the fire alarm so, replacement. Yeah, I mean it went so, off last year during the MCAS. It so did. That you know that and so that that was kind of annoying. But the fact that the fire alarm might work and might not work to me seems like more of a priority. This was before Chris's time too, mm -hmm. but we've been monitoring it. The fire alarm went off an outrageous number of times within a certain number of weeks. Uh, I was over several times, and during one of our dialogues, Adrian was talking about replacing it. And one of his crew said, well, maybe we should look at the sensors, that they haven't been replaced in over 10 years. They replaced the sensors, which were expensive. They were like $200 yeah. a piece or something. But they, the fire alarm it was functioning well after that. It went off a couple times this year. Chris and I talked. There were causes for it. One was the kitchen that mm -hmm. set it off. Uh, so I don't know that you've noticed anything, but since the sensors were replaced, it was a major issue, but it has not been since the sensors were done. Chris, do you have any more I, information? I've talked to um, Simplex, is the contractor that monitors that. And what they're saying is the head end needs to be upgraded, or the, the panel. If the panel's upgraded, it allows you to get lower voltage uh, sensors. What's happening, and I, I believe, is that the sensors now are setting off breakers or fuses in the system, and those are basically what the problems are. So it's going off been. again? It, it happened last week, I believe, okay. a couple weeks ago. But I'll be I'll be walking through probably next week with this. Do we have an updated quote on what the replacement of that head end would look like, or is it? The well, he told me <clears throat> the head end would be about ten thousand dollars. So I don't know where this, you know, the two hundred ten came from. It came from a complete, the complete one. Yeah. I, I think it warrants uh, further discussion because my understanding is this system has been a problem since it was put in we have had poor service on it we have had little to no response when we've been having kids evacuated two and three times a day so i i'd be open to exploring other options besides this company it's also not fair to the fire department no it's not fair to anybody but well then you know staff I mean, and children evacuating two and three times in a day is not acceptable no and then the people in town who may have who may, who need may have emergency department and yeah. it's their yeah. But I, I would research this company before we proceed doing business at, at, with large amounts of money spent. Okay. How old is the current system that they've told? Uh, 15, 15 years? 15 years? From the renovation, I would think it's 15, 16 years. I think 15 years. So. So are we leaving it there with a note to, or are we talking? Well, I think what we're going to see is what the total cost of replacing the head end system would be, because if it's ten thousand dollars, it's under the thr threshold. Then okay. you know that may be something that we do out of our budget, or that somehow, somehow Chris finds money for. Finds money. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, I think 
the recommendation, the reason that this was not prioritized higher was because we were made to feel confident that the system's integrity was, was solid enough that minor adjustments to it would, would be enough to fix it, but certainly not putting any children's safety in risk, you know, in harm's way. I think if, if it wasn't working at all, we would have a, we'd be having a different conversation. I, yeah, I just don't, I, with, you know, it's still going off, it's still, I don't yeah. know. That, so. And I'll talk to Dawn to see what's going on. I think if we have if we have a, a solution that's going to make it work for ten thousand yeah, sure. dollars, then yeah. that's a better absolutely. Yeah. And to make it work would be awesome. To make it not go off when it doesn't. To make it work the way it's supposed to, I should yeah. say, it does work. <laughs> it works. It, it can tell you there's a fire. That's important. Lily, Lily will be happy to give you reports on how often it is. I'm happy to take those reports from Lily. <laughs> Look at your number. Yeah, I was going to say just give Lily his direct number. All right. Any other questions on capital? So, uh, yeah, so again, I mean, you know, historically, we will be lucky if we get the first three that we're asking for. Uh, potentially, we could convince uh, them to loop in the remaining exhaust fan replacements, especially, uh, you know, given some of the concern that there has been in the past over air quality issues. But I think, on the whole, um, we're, we're looking at the top three as being the most, uh, most critical. But obviously, if this committee feels like we need to move things around a little bit, that's fine. Is it a sort of a list or is the idea that the fire, because the fire thing seems pretty important. It does, yeah. I mean, how, how long do you think it'll take you to get that information? Um, I can push them. I'll okay. see if I can get it next week or and set the meeting up, but I, I, think we'll, I think I'll be meeting with them next week. Okay, so. that'll be great. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we can we can add a stipulation or, you know, and if it's going to be a low a low cost thing, then, you know, we can obviously move some money around within our budget to fix it. Well, Although I, Tom's I would, cringing. No, I would say that no, because we have been chastised by select board for how we moved some money around to pay for some capital projects that should never have been so but but if this is not like we're not hiding money or moving you know like I, shifting money around we're and the real sure question is are we going to wait are we going to wait for town meeting i'm i'm just saying i i understand why tom's cringing because it well, the you know, way that it's being said i think is a little yeah no, I, we can certainly say it say it better but i i would i would be very supportive of a of a line item transfer to fund a ten thousand dollar improvement to the fire system now rather than wait until july 1st for money to become available from town meeting especially while it's actively occurring is that a better way of saying it I, I'm thinking that we need to watch carefully what we're doing in terms of investing money in building projects because of how wording is written from the select board. Well, I agree. That's all I'm saying. I agree. Uh, you know, and it's it's obviously. And, and I understand. I mean, I, yeah. I certainly do not want to jeopardize no, anyone's safety, but right. I also think that. I don't think that this is political in any way. I think it's just a safety issue. And, and I think. And, I, I and if yeah. the select board would like to come and ask us about our reasoning behind it, I'd be more than happy to. And I also think that, that you know historically. You know they've been. You're correct. They've been the first uh, first group of people to jump out and criticize us for, you know, for funding money for funding projects out of our budget. But they've also been the first group of people to encourage us to do the same thing. So it's more of a game of gotcha than it's a, a matter of doing the right thing. And I think that. Well, I think it's something that you know, just like I'm going to speak with their chair about the boiler issues I think this is something you know to put on his radar as well that it may be a more pressing issue mm -hmm. you know just out of fair. Mm -hmm. Tom well I just want to add I think with the change in the threshold to qualify as a capital puts a lot of stress on all of the town departments on how do they fund projects that now that are less than 25,000 threshold and it did come up at a department heads meeting that operating budgets are really your your only choice now to fund these type of projects that uh, don't qualify so right so, so our anyway that's my presentation thank you I, I
I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Chris Reed. He's new to the job. He's been extremely responsive to the principals and administrative team, and we're very fortunate to have him. I know that one of the concerns previously, the principals, they couldn't get answers to questions about things like the fire alarm. So thanks, Chris, for your support. Thank we you appreciate very much. it. Thank you. This is totally child of fire too, so thank you for being <laughs> <up with> <laughs> All right. So do we need a motion on? I have yeah. a motion to uh, accept the list as uh, in a prioritized order. All right, so I move uh, to accept the FY16 uh, capital project list as presented, uh, adding, of course, the stipulation that should we find out that the cost of the fire replace or the fire alarm replacement at center school is more than expected from Chris Reed, uh, that we would revisit this prioritized list. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Good night. Thank you, Beth and Lynn. In the, in the Thank you. All right. So we did special work. All right. Any subcommittee reports? That Do, have met. Before you continue, uh, and I've remembered that I forgot something very important. <laughs> um, and I mean, no, it's, sorry. it's, no, it's just, just us now. But um, I do. I just wanted to thank uh, all the principals who, uh, from every school. They had to deal with me this week um, <laughs> because they have been very welcoming to allow my leads from the play to come in tomorrow and Wednesday and perform to their whole school's last blocks. And wow. uh, oh. something that hasn't been done before, and they were really open to it, and it made the process really easy. So it's very well, exciting. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great story from the newspaper. Perfect. That was, it, it been and I think it's so great that the younger children see the opportunities, that they learn to appreciate art. So the fact the high school students do this is really appreciated. So. Yeah. I, we talked about it in our PTO meeting, actually, last week, that you were going to be doing that. Perfect. I, it was really well received by the parents that were the, there. Awesome. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be at uh, center school tomorrow, and we're actually also gonna be. At, I know this isn't us, but Lamont Montessori. Okay. Um, after that, and then uh, Wednesday we're going to Blueberry. Huh. Could you Sorry. send us some pictures? I will. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you can't uh, make sure he doesn't tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> no I know. Of the kids, right? I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the high school students. Yeah, but not the little right, kids. Right, not the little ones. <laughs> Just. Thank you. Liz, any of your subcommittees? Uh, we did meet. The energy group met. Um, Is that the joint energy joint group? Joint energy group, yes. Um, what did we do? We um, discussed um, talking to companies for solar and what the options would be, just, just feeling it out and um, seeing what we could do, not making any sort of commitments. Because um, we'd like to know the feasibility, the costs, um, other ways to do things, waiting a few years so it becomes more popular and cheaper, or new technologies coming out. Um, what else did we talk about, Kim? Uh, about it. Then we just talked about the lighting audit and how we're moving forward with the one from the schools and their uh, the town is still in the works. Right. And I would just, um, I, I know you guys are always great about reporting back to us what you're, what's going on um, at one of your next meetings. I might suggest that uh, we suggest the same for our joint partners. Um, I don't know that information is being sent back to the town and select board the same way that you guys report back. So I would just ask that you, you kind of share what you do back for us and, and suggest since this is a joint venture that that joint information be shared. Right. Well, you're she, uh, Marie has taken that proposal that we had. Mm -hmm. She's got a copy of that and she's going to be sharing it with them and I know that there is some communication. I just don't know if, if it says much. I agree. I, I just, <laughs> um, you know, I, I've just been informed that there's not been that we know a lot more. Let's just okay. leave it at that. So maybe that's something you'd like to talk about as a joint committee. Any of your other committees? Green. Um, 
We're planning a policy subcommittee meeting. Yeah, we have a policy subcommittee meeting Coming soon. Up. Okay. Katie, you said nothing yeah. on yours. Kim or Michelle, anything on yours? No. Nope. Okay. <coughs> Moving forward. Approval of warrants, Liz. Okay. Uh, let's see. I move that the school committee approve the warrant batch number 2722 um, of the school lunch FY15 fund dated November 26, 2014 in the amount of $81,965.19. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Okay. Okay, second. Uh, I move that the school committee approve the warrant batch number 2700 of the op general operating fund FY15 fund dated November 26, 2014 in the amount of $220,031.42. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? We do have a consent agenda. I move on the recommendation of the superintendent that the school committee approve the consent agenda for the November 17th, 2014 school committee meeting as presented. A second. motion, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, minutes. I move that the school committee approve the minutes to the October 27th, 2014 school committee meeting motion do I have a second 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 any corrections or discussion all those in favor okay um, approve and not release please I move that the school can be approved and not release the minutes to the executive session of the October 27th 2014 school committee meeting as presented motion do I have a second, second. okay all those in favor Okay, we do have an executive session planned for this evening. So, could I, I move that the school committee adjourn to executive session for the purposes of strategies that relates to bargaining with Unit A, and uh, as it pertains to litigation, uh, and to reconvene into open session. This motion requires a roll call vote. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Roll call. Please. Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. We will see you back on December 8th. Have a good night.